Hey everyone, how's it going? So, uh, I am recording this video very quickly, uh, because I am about, uh, after I film this video, I'm gonna run out the door to the movie theater, uh, because, uh, I'm going to see a live broadcast of Die Valkyrie from, uh, the Metropolitan Opera. Um, those of you, of you who don't know, Die Valkyrie is, uh, rich, uh, an opera by Richard Wagner, the second in his four opera cycle called, uh, Daring des Nibelungen which is an epic, uh, sort of an epic, uh, opera cycle that he wrote, um, and, uh, I have only seen the first of the operas in it, uh, Das Rheingold, and I really liked that one, and, uh, so anyway, uh, just so, <laughs> I'm not here to talk about Richard Wagner, I'm just, uh, I'm gonna record this video very quickly, hopefully it works out in one take and in one, one, uh, without any editing, uh, otherwise you will be seeing me from a different time, um, but I decided that I would uh, sort of swipe a page out of uh, Jason of Old Blue's chapter and verses and Kelly's uh, of books I'm not reading's uh, books, respective books of BookTube, um, and uh, do a quarterly wrap up. Um, so I'm gonna do uh, a wrap up of some of the books that I have read in the first three months of the year. Now that it's near the, near the end of of March. Um, I'm going to go through them very quickly, very short, you know, one-sentence reviews. Um, if I have done more in-depth reviews anywhere else, I will try to leave links to those if anyone cares to check them out. Um, so anyway, I will get right to them. So the first book that I read this year, I have a gigantic tower of books, of the books that I'm going to talk about, that is teetering on the brink of collapse, so we'll see if this works out. Um, so the first book I read was A Mad Love, An Introduction to Opera by Vivian Schweitzer, uh, which was published in 2018, and uh, which was a really approachable, really fun, and really informative uh, just primer on uh, opera and the main points of opera, um, and uh, some of the great operas that have, you know, uh, that are still in the repertoire today. And I really enjoyed it, and I made a video about it, so I will leave a link to that. Um, Next book I read was uh, part two of Johann Wolfgang von Goethe's uh, masterpiece, Faust. I actually didn't read it in this copy. This is just the copy that I happen to own of Faust at the moment. Um, but I read part two, and part two was uh, much more puzzling and difficult and weird than part one. And uh, I sort of needed a long commentary on it in order to understand it. I read uh, Harold Bloom's chapter about it in his book The Western Canon, and I read a really long uh, commentary on it um, that is included in the Oxford World's Classics version, which I bought as an ebook and read. Um, but I ultimately found it very rewarding and interesting, although I didn't love it as much as, as part one. Um, next is uh, Dune Messiah, the second uh, book in Frank Herbert's Dune Saga, the sequel to Dune, his masterpiece, um, which uh, I had very mixed feelings about. I don't think it's nearly as good as Dune. I kind of feel like it should have just been one novel with the Children of Dune, the third book. Um, well, you know, as a bridge to the Children of Dune, it certainly is worth reading because the Children of Dune is very good. And I did do a video about this for Dunuary. It was a buddy read with several other booktubers. Um, so I'll leave a link to uh, that video. Um, next. I reread a couple of Shakespeare plays, actually, and I'm not going to hold up both of them individually. I just got my Riverside Shakespeare to show you. Um, I reread uh, King Lear and Hamlet. Uh, Hamlet, as always, is is just fascinating and great. Um, I I get more out of it every time, and um, this time certainly there were things that I saw that I didn't see last time. Uh, I see Hamlet as a as a play by Shakespeare that would be good to reread every year, once a year. Um, just as a sort of yearly reading ritual, so I, I may make that a thing. Um, and King Lear is just a masterpiece. I did a video about it, I'll leave a link to it, and I, I regard it now at this point in my relationship with Shakespeare, I regard it as as his uh, masterpiece. Um, next, I reread a few plays by Aeschylus. I reread his trilogy, The Oresteia, and uh, his individual play, Prometheus Bound. Uh, both, both of which I found very interesting and really enjoyed the second time around. It had been a long time since I'd read them, and uh, I think I developed a lot as a reader since I last read them, so I think I got a lot more out of them this time around. Um, okay, next. Okay, next is a book I don't have with me. Uh, uh, it's called The Hatred of Poetry by Ben Lerner, which uh, Neil Griffiths uh, mentioned in a video once, and it's about um, people who don't like poetry and don't dislike poetry for the wrong reason. They dislike poetry because it, it doesn't achieve a standard that is too high for 
any human to achieve. Um, and so in that sense, it is about just what poetry is and what poetry does. Um, and it's very short. It's like 70 pages with really big margins. Um, I read it in one sitting. Um, I wouldn't call it a must read. Uh, it was good. I'm glad I read it, but uh, I don't know if I'll ever reread it or whether I would, you know, go pressing it in the hands of, of other people. Um, but uh, but it was good. It was well written and uh, it had some interesting uh, comments on certain poems by uh, Emily Dickinson and um, and also a, a lengthy commentary on uh, Claudia Rankin's uh, book, um, Citizen, um, which was pretty interesting. Um, but again, not a must read, I don't think. Um, next one, I think, is sort of a must read if you like poetry. It's uh, On Poetry by Glyn Maxwell, which um, is just his very short, really, meditation on poetry. And it is absolutely beautiful, beautifully written. Uh, you could almost call the book itself a work of prose poetry. Um, but uh, it is, I think, suitable both for readers and writers of poetry. Um, you know, he has so many fascinating sort of exercises to do, both for readers to get more out of poems and for writers to get better at writing poems. Um, but it's not just like a manual of writing poetry. Um, he doesn't just, he doesn't go through, you know, what what imagery is and what rhyme or meter or, or, or form or go through different forms. He just, it's really just a meditation on someone who has had a very intimate relationship with poetry for much of his life. And it's just absolutely beautiful. I highly recommend you read this if you if you like poetry. Um, next is a big book. Uh, this is a very good book that I really regret I didn't have much time to talk about on my channel. It's Behave, the Biology of Humans at Our Best and Worst by Robert Sapolsky. And, um, this really is just a, a surprisingly comprehensive look at a, at a lot of the major findings in uh, neuroscience and psychology. Um, where he just looks at human nature and, uh, you know, what makes humans do the best things that they do and what makes them do the worst things that they do. Um, and it's it's friendly to anyone who doesn't know all that much about neuroscience and psychology. In fact, I would almost call this a really good introductory text if you haven't really read any psychology or neuroscience or or um, or ha never was never had to take an introductory psychology class in college or something, uh, then this would be a good primer. It is big, but it is really approachable. It is, it is funny, it is easy to read, it is well written. Um, and, uh, yeah, and just fascinating on every page, I think. Um, you know, I, I have studied this subject for years, and there were uh, places where I folded down the bottom of the page just so that I could return to it, because I think that there uh, is research reported in here that I could use in my own uh, research as a social psychologist. Um, so I just really recommend this. I think this is probably the best nonfiction book that I've read so far this year. Um, Next is another one I did a whole video about, and uh, a, a brilliant work of art, uh, The Road by Cormac McCarthy, um, which uh, I'm not going to say much about it. I, I did a video on it, I'll leave a link to it, uh, but enough has been said about The Road. I'm going to let the battlefield just sit uh, sit uh, still for a while, but I think that this is a masterpiece, um, and it will go down as one of my favorite novels ever. So, yeah. Um, next is another that I don't have with me. Uh, the Long Take by Robin Robertson, uh, which is uh, a novel about a a uh, World War II veteran who is Canadian but decides to move to the United States after the war and is suffering from PTSD and alcoholism. Uh, and uh, really the book is, is about him trying to find a sort of direction in life by becoming a, a journalist and a writer. Um, but uh, ending up sort of just descending into self-destruction uh, with his alcoholism. Uh, and uh, it is written in sort of uh, poems, so it's a novel in verse, um, and there are sections in verse, and there are small sections in prose as well, and the sections in prose tend to be flashbacks to his time in World War II, um, and the verse tends to be what's happening in his life currently. And um, I liked it. Um, I felt like some of the social issues that he deals with, uh, sort of about uh, how housing for poor people was being destroyed and how uh, sort of the growing economic inequality that was happening in the years after World War II, I feel like those messages were very heavy-handed. And um, I, yeah, it, the, my main sense uh, at the end of the novel was mostly I liked this but didn't love it. However, I think it could be a hugely powerful form 
if Robin Robertson continues to pursue it. I really hope that he keeps writing in this form, because I think he could produce a masterpiece uh, in this form, in my, in my opinion. Um, so, uh, yeah, I did like it. I didn't love it. Um, next is uh, American Epic, The Story of the American Indian by Alice Marriott and Carol Ratchlin, which I had profoundly mixed experience, uh, mixed feelings about. I feel like I learned a good amount, but I also was troubled by some the way that they uh, dealt with the uh, issue of boarding schools for Native Americans, which became common in the in the 20th century, where uh, many abuses were perpetrated against them. They were, you know, essentially these boarding schools were uh, a concerted effort to destroy Native American cultures, and um, and I think that they're too generous to those schools. Uh, so yeah, I'm not I'm not entirely sure still how I feel about this. I am gonna hold on to it, um, but uh, I will leave a link to the video I made about this one as well. And um, next I have um, Don Quixote, which I finally finished, and again had very mixed feelings about. I uh, see its brilliance and why it's important, uh, and uh, parts of it are very funny and uh, interesting, but uh, I really didn't enjoy it all that much. I think it's one of those classics that I will just have to sort of accept is important and is, is uh, you know, an important work and is a work of genius, but that I personally just don't enjoy all that much. Um, part of that might be that I read... Um, too much of it all at once. Um, I think that this probably is a book that's best enjoyed in small little chunks. Um, but I have a hard time reading books like that, so, um, yeah, which just speaks even more to the fact that this, this, I think, isn't a book that's going to go down as a favorite, even though it's, it's obviously very, uh, and a very important work of literature. Um, next is a slew of, um, Icelandic literature. So I read uh, a few of the Icelandic sagas. I read um, uh, the saga of Gunnlaug Serpent Tongue, uh, the Vineland sagas, the saga of the Greenlanders, and um, Eric the Red saga. Those two sagas make up the Vineland sagas, which are both about the Vikings' trips to America. And um, and then I read King Harold's saga uh, by Snorri Sturluson. I unfortunately did not get around to reading the prose edda for the saga long. Um, really just because I got lazy and wasn't feeling it at the time, and I feel really bad because the prose edda sounds like something I would love. But I really enjoyed all of these that I read. Uh, they really they really were just incredibly entertaining and fascinating. Um, and I really hope we do Saga Along again next year. Um, all right, next I have a slew of plays now. Um, so uh, first is The Apple Cart by George Bernard Shaw which is a sort of political satire that he wrote about um, the relationship between uh, the king and the sort of parliamentary government of the United Kingdom. And it sort of seemed to me like a sort of, I, I really found it very clever. It was a, a sort of a commentary on just the ineptitude of democracy. Uh, George Bernard Shaw was famously anti-democratic. Uh, he, in fact, went through a phase where he was very pro-Hitler and Stalin. Uh, but he, he eventually saw the error of that way. But anyway, he was very critical of democracy, and uh, this this play seems to explore that a lot, and how uh, you see this king is able to sort of manipulate um, the ministers and the government to get his way, uh, because the ministers can never agree on anything. Um, so it, it, it was a very clever, sort of incisive critique of democracy. Um, next is uh, All That Fall by Samuel Beckett, which I read in this volume of his collected shorter plays. Um, which may have taken the place as my favorite play by Samuel Beckett. Um, no one, no one like him, no one makes everyday life seem as depressing yet meaningful as Samuel Beckett does. Um, this play, uh, and, uh, yeah, and I just, I, I loved All That Fall. I did read a few other plays in here, but I'm not going to go through every single one because some of them are quite short and didn't impact me quite as much, didn't have quite as, in, quite as much of an impact on me as All That Fall. Uh, so, yeah, Samuel Beckett. Um, next is A Raisin in the Sun by Lorraine Hansberry, um, which I enjoyed, uh, which I thought was a very incisive uh, critique of the idea of the American dream and the way that the American dream is denied to blacks often. Um, but whether it'll go down as a favorite, I'm not really sure. Um, uh, and finally, in terms of my plays, is The Homecoming by Harold Pinter. Um, which was the first, I've now, this was my third play by Harold Pinter, and this was the first that I really enjoyed. Um, I really liked this one. Uh, it was mystifying and enigmatic, and that seems to be the sort of, um, 
seems to be the sort of uh, consensus about this play, the only consensus about it, is that it, it, it is enigmatic and weird and just has no real way, uh, uh, no real firm interpretation, but it is just fascinating and I would love to see it staged. I think it could be really effective and uh, yeah, anyway, I, I'm looking forward to reading more Harold Pinter. Um, next is Thucydides' History of the Peloponnesian War, um, which I thought was fascinating and uh, important and made a lot of good points. And um, yeah, just a lot of points that are have been relevant throughout history and are still relevant today, perhaps more than ever. Um, but uh, in terms of how it was as a reading experience, it is kind of dry and uh, hard to get through at times. Kind of boring, um, but nonetheless an important book. Um, next is uh, the Mahabharata. Oh, by the way, I made a video about the history of the Peloponnesian War, which I will leave a link to. I also made a video about this next one, uh, the Mahabharata, a modern retelling by Carol Satyamurti, uh, which I read for March of the Mammoths, which is an event uh, hosted by Jason of Old Booth Chapter and Verse, uh, Alex of Big Al Books, and myself. Um, I'll leave links to their channels. Um, anyway, this uh, event is just to uh, get people to read long books, and this uh, book's over 800 pages, and this book is 860 pages about. Um, and I just loved it. Uh, it became a new favorite, and it is just a great, epic, and at times very moving story. Okay, we're in the home stretch. Um, uh, this uh, next one is Upstream, Selected Essays by Mary Oliver, um, which is a the late Mary Oliver, I should say. Um, I am kind of reading this. I think I was impelled to pick this up finally, uh, sort of in her memory, because she recently died. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, this is a collection of essays by her that have appeared in literary journals previously and previous books as well. Um, and they, as all collections of essays in my experience so far are, uh, they were, they, they were uneven. Um, you know, in fact, the title essay, Upstream, I think is kind of the weakest. Um, it really just felt like a sort of uninspired prose poem. Um, but there are essays in here about her love of Walt Whitman and Ralph Waldo Emerson and Edgar Allan Poe. And there are great nature essays in here, some great nature writing. Um, and, uh, the essay, the, the essays that I liked the most were the ones about Whitman, uh, Poe, and Emerson, uh, which are really just her appreciation of their work. Um, you know, she does give some commentary, but really they are just, uh, you know, a sort of, te a very eloquent, uh, testament to one writer's love of those, uh, of those authors. And, uh, and her essay on Poe did what I thought no one could do, which was it actually made me want to read Edgar Allan Poe. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm glad I read this book. Um, and, uh, yeah, anyway. And then the last two I'm going to talk about together. This is, uh, When Bad Things Happen to Good People by Harold Kushner and Who Needs God by Harold Kushner. Um, uh, what, When Bad Things Happen to Good People is about the sort of problem of, of theodicy and, uh, about why, uh, why should we believe in God if he allows, uh, so many horrible things to happen to good people. Um, and, uh, it was interesting. Um, I find this problem of theodicy very interesting. Uh, I personally don't actually believe in God, so that part of it wasn't exactly relevant to me as a person, but I still found it intellectually interesting. And I think he does make a lot of points about suffering and who suffers and why we suffer um, and how we shouldn't blame ourselves for suffering and and the fact that we suffer um, that are good for both religious and non-religious people. Um, but again, I don't know if I would press this into the hands of a non-religious person, uh, just because there is a lot of God in it that they might not relate to all that much. Um, and then Who Needs God is essentially just about uh, what religion can do for us. Um, why be religious, essentially, is the uh, central question of this book. And he's not trying to convince you to believe in God, or even necessarily, well, he is trying to convince you to be religious. He's not trying to convince you to believe in God or to believe in his particular religion. He's a rabbi. Um, he's just um, trying to discuss what good religion does people once they let it into their lives. Um, how can it benefit them? And I found parts of it interesting. Um, really, this is just sort of an extended opinion piece. Uh, it's not very rigorous. There's not much scholarship here. There's not much, there's no real data that he cites aside from his own personal experience, which is extensive, I will say. Um, so parts of it were very interesting, uh, but on, on the whole, I don't know how, 
again, to the extent to which I would uh, press this into anyone's hands, um, I found it interesting, again, as an intellectual exercise in what religion does for people. Um, so anyway, yeah, um, that's the last book. I just actually just finished this today. Um, and I am still working on uh, the biography of James Merrill. Uh, I'm halfway through it precisely. I, I, I'm obviously not going to finish it by tomorrow, by the end of March of the Mammoths. But um, I will perhaps make a March of the Mammoths update video tomorrow and sort of a conclusion, con conclu conclusion video, I guess we could call it, um, about March of the Mammoths and just some of my thoughts about, about large books. But anyway, um, I'm still working on that, and uh, I still have uh, some other books that I'm in the middle of but that I'm sort of just chipping away at, like uh, the essays of Emerson and the col a collection of po essays about Dante that I've been reading, um, and Dubliners by James Joyce, which I've sort of been reading just here and there, one short story at a time. Um, so yeah, um, just sort of th those books I didn't include because I'm I'm still sort of working on them and chipping away at them, um, and I obviously I obviously can't talk about all the poetry I've been reading because I can't. There would be no way for me to uh, keep track of all the poems I read because I read a lot of poems per week in many different volumes that I have on my shelves and by many different poets. Um, so unfortunately, I can't really do wrap ups of those. Um, but anyway, if um, anyone has. Uh, thoughts on these books, you've read these books, please let me know. I'm always really glad to hear. Um, I hope March of the Mammoths is going well for everyone. Um, I hope your weekend is going well. I hope you're all doing, uh, well. Um, and, uh, yeah, anyway, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna end this video, set it to upload, and then head off to, uh, to the movie theater. Or as I like to think of it, I'm gonna head off to the opera. <laughs> um, anyway, I will, uh, talk to you all later. Bye, guys.